we are continuing with the next presentation, um, which is actually by the organizers of this event. Um, uh, Foy, may I, may I give you the floor? Sure. Uh, thanks. Um, appreciate it. Uh, it's been a few hours, some good content so far. Uh, but uh, as Joria mentioned, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the organizers ourselves and some of the stuff we're working on. Um, <clears throat> I'll start out just by saying something uh, that's pretty obvious. I don't think any of us don't know this, that the scammers are winning. Um, by and far, and we'll talk about this briefly uh, again, uh, there's little doubt that we're fight, you know, it's, we're doing the good fight as a community. Uh, thank goodness we're out here. We're trying to help, but it seems like we're fighting a losing battle. Um, uh, so next slide, please. Um, traditionally, uh, one of the things we look at here, um, you know, crime has obviously morphed and moved into this uh, cyber community and, um, and, and loves it. Um, you know, why would I go rob a store anymore? You know, I'm going to need a gun. There's a chance I could get shot. The police are going to catch me. You know, when you look at traditional crime, there's just one, there's just plain and simple, a much higher chance of getting caught. One, there's cameras, they get pictures of you, they know who you are. Uh, when I get done, I got things I need to do something with. You know, if I rob the store and I got a bunch of bicycles, now I got to move these things. Um, when we look at the online, this is the market that's growing and it's, it's thriving. Um, you know, it, it, a, the, the opportunity of getting caught is so low. Uh, it's so low to enter the field of cyber crime. You know, the investment on my side is pretty small. Uh, so providing these virtual services is, is the obvious way to go if, I, if I'm of a criminal mind. Uh, next slide. Uh, like we mentioned here, as you can see, you know, um, when we think about it, a lot of these services are, are so easy um, to get into. You know, advertising, marketing, getting an SSL, um, advertising my, my goods or my services through Facebook or online supports or creating a Ponzi scheme using the, the high, high, high yield investment that we, uh, we talked about at the beginning of the sessions um, are so easy for criminals to get involved in. And, uh, and again, you know, such a low cost to enter the, the, to enter the field. Um, next. Now here we'll see, you know, again, uh, when we look at how crime is morphed, you know, um, so uh, a couple of statistics here, when we look at, uh, the cybercrime survey from England and Wales, just to, to start with, you know, 33% uh, of all crime was fraud. Um, <clears throat> looking at um, total fraud incidences, you know, 63% of all fraud, there was no contact between the victim and the criminal. You know, generally they're using um, email, phone calls, SMS, you know, some kind of, of prevented, you know, ads that they've put out on the internet. You know, most of them don't actually interact face on face when it comes to fraud anymore. And um, over 50%, almost 60% of all fraud incidences were cyber related. Next one. So how can we turn the tide? When we're looking at this, you know, what's something we could do as a community? First thing is we need to know our customers. We need to look at, you know, the community and the businesses that are providing these services need to know the community, know their customer, know who they're working with. So next slide. So when we look at um, setting up a scam, you know, it's pretty straightforward what we've got to do. You know, registering an email, creating a domain, you know, as a bad boy, I'm going to create an entity, create a presence. Then I need to create a site of some type. There are plenty of site builders. There's e-commerce sites, places to market my wares, which aren't actually wares. Um, they're all out here. They're easily accessible. They're easy for me to work with. Then I need to gain traffic. Oh, again, how easy is this? You know, with call centers, using messengers, social media, you know, um, compromising searches, putting global ads out here. It's, none of this is, is rocket science to these guys. Once I've got some traffic coming in, now I get my money. You know, I've got uh, back office payment providers. I can create crypto addresses. I can move through money transfer sites. You know, so cashing out is not that complicated. And then there we go. We just rinse and repeat. 
You know, I don't have to actually deliver the goods that get bought. I can create these lists. I get money back. So these services are so easy. You know, so through these steps, each one of these, each one of these steps are opportunities, actually, that we as a community need to look at. How can we stop some of these? Next slide. So one, one example, and it was great to hear Aaron uh, from Google mention, you know, one of the things they've been looking at with their new ads is identification, verifying these people that are doing the advertising. And guess what? The crime goes through the floor. Um, just for an example right here, you, can, you see, you know, um, knowing your customer, the Danish registry, by implementing one small feature that you have to provide an ID to register a domain, some type of valid identification, and all of a sudden their fraud drops by 85%. What a phenomenal effect one small step can make. Next slide. Now we know that this is a bit of an issue to a lot of people because what is the internet? It's supposed to be a free for all. You know, internet equals freedom. And in this type of a scenario, it only takes one bad actor. One provider is enough to allow a lot of fraud and a lot of crime to get through. And as long as we have one or two, things are gonna happen. And again, you know, this is a global problem. How are you gonna create legislation? How, legislation? How are you gonna actually convict these people? And when there's so much dispersity out there from where the users are and where they're happening. Um, next slide. Yeah, so as we look at this, if we, if we wanna stop some of these scams, we wanna to get to the beginning and, and figure out how can we actually make a difference. Um, as a community, we're gonna to have to do this. Because unfortunately, um, you know, a lot, especially when you get out to the user community, people don't understand that law enforcement, when it comes to cyber crimes, are after the effect. Or, you know, they get involved before they can take a site down. Things have already happened. It's already gone. Um, so this is where we look at how are some ways that as a community, maybe we can start to interact and where as we look at these steps, these stages of criminals getting involved, creating their sites, going out, taking advantage of people, stealing their money. Where are steps that we could get involved to try to make a, make a difference? Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to my compadre, Kondre, Jordi. Thank you very much for it. Um, so we, we see uh, two opportunities where we can find scams better. And one is actually, apart from having a better uh, act and more active know your customer process, is between the moment the crime is being committed and the first victim's fall. And uh, those of you like me who like uh, science fiction, uh, and who have seen the, the movie Minority Report, um, uh, uh, where uh, crime is predicted before it's happening. Um, I do think we can predict cyber crime to some extent also before it's happening, because as, uh, as Foy was already saying, um, by far most scammers are lazy and uh, they uh, repeat their scams over and over again uh, they rinse and repeat, uh, and that allows us to identify them before the actual crime is being committed. But it requires data, and, and lots of it, uh, in two ways. Uh, one, uh, data is necessary to, to teach uh, artificial intelligence algorithms to recognize uh, uh, scams uh, uh, as, as at the moment they're happening, as also uh, Jordi from uh, the .eu registry uh, uh, was, was telling. The second part is uh, when you are setting up such an algorithm, you also need data to be sure that the algorithm is correct. And in this case, victim reports can help tremendously to confirm that the, uh, the uh, such algorithms are correct or sometimes wrong. So we need data in two places, one at the start and two uh, uh, from victims who are reporting scams. And if we collect all the data, then we can create an algorithm which is continuously improved and can actually block scammers before they have their first victims uh, on board. For this, we need, we need data. Um, and it starts with domain names, IP addresses, but also email addresses, uh, phone numbers, wallets, etc. Uh, and there, I'm very happy to report that Scam Advisor, uh, the Global Cyber Alliance, 
and the MT Fishing Workgroup will start sharing all their data with each other to better fight scams and to identify them earlier so that they can be taken down or apprehended by uh, law enforcement. And I'm very happy that we will make this move uh, together. Um, each of us will share the data our data partners bring in, and this allows us to create the largest data set of cybercrime-related data in the world. We will start with domain names, but uh, we have plans to continue towards phone numbers, email addresses, uh, uh, wallet IDs, etc. But domain names are GDPR-wise the safest route to start, but we do have plans in the next year to expand to other items which can I help identify scammers as they are committing crime. Um, our data partners have free access, and um, uh, it, that allows our data partners to also fight in their own way the, the cybercrime they are reporting, but also getting back from the, data, the shared data sources. Um, I would like to conclude my, my part of the presentation here and give the floor to Andy, who is uh, going to discuss the second part of where we think cybercrime can be fought better. Andy, the floor is yours. Thanks again, guys, and uh, thanks again for the opportunity to be with everybody today. Uh, I'm afraid the real Tom Cruise couldn't be with us, so uh, clearly I'm, I'm the next best thing that the guys managed to invite in. So, so I am going to give a little bit of a view on the, the future of, of maybe cybercrime, hopefully. So first of all, uh, just to look at this chart here, which is a bit of an eye chart, so I thought there's no better way to get an audience who's been in Zoom for three hours excited than to show some hexadecimal domains. But what we're looking at here for the eagle-eyed amongst you is you will notice that, by the way, these are criminal domains which are historic that we've spotted across some of our partners and some platforms we've helped to build. You will spot that many of these domains are copied across top-level domains, or TLDs as we call them. So the guys from Google and especially from uh, Urid and .eu talked about it's much easier to stop a domain going live and to pick up on Yuri's point, think about what could happen in the future than it is to suspend a live domain. So I think if I were to share domains with all of you in the audience where you could see these were criminal, you would know that those hexadecimal strings dot whatever the top level domain is, is highly likely to be criminal. And you should think about whether you let that go live on your hosting environment, on your domain, on your ISP or other infrastructure that we've, we've talked about so far. And by the way, there are lots of other domains out there such as Andy's fake trainers, and these dangerous sites and, and what I would call human readable words. Clearly, none of these things are selling Versace handbags or maybe fake COVID vaccines, but, but who knows? So let's move on if we can, please. So uh, we today are announcing a platform we've built, which we call Domain Trust. We've called it Domain Trust because the mission is to bring the trust back to domains. And as we said, APWG and ourselves and Scam Advisor either are or soon will be sharing data. And from the Global Cyber Alliance point of view, this data is, is specifically around cybercrime and around domains. But our hypothesis that we've proven by working with our partners and partners such as Central Nick and BT and ICANN have come on board with us with this project is that registries and registrars will take action. So either not take a domain live or suspend a domain if they have sufficient evidence. And hopefully you've heard that from, from, from some of the previous speakers today. There are many sources of threat intelligence but some of them are hard to share mechanically. Uh, an organization, a big organization in the UK, I won't name them, but their CISO said to me, he said, I'm always attacked by a domain in Panama and I keep on emailing the Panamanian registry and they never get back to me. And I kind of think I'm not surprised. They must have 50,000 emails a day in 20 different languages. We need to get mechanical and at scale around this. And as we just said on the prior slide and the next point, abaddomain.co.uk, if that's taken down by the law enforcement community in the UK, there's a chance that the same domain still exists in France, in Germany, et cetera, across the TLD space, often in different languages, uh, but there's often common patterns that we can talk about there. And to talk about a platform called Quad9 that many of you have heard of that we co-created with uh, PCH and IBM, if you point your DNS to 9.9.9.9, uh, that platform helps you to, to be blocked before going to criminal sites. Uh, because that's one of our partners, there are many domains, in fact, arguably 4 million domains every day that we know about, they know about, which are cyber criminal, that we could share. But also we could share with blocking sources such as Quad9, such as Scam Advisor, such as Cloudflare, to help to block these domains whilst the registries and registrars are making their decision. So if we move our slide forwards, please. 
So what is unique? Because some of you may have heard about these projects before. And hopefully one of the themes you've heard from many of the speakers today is that there are lots of isolated good examples of good work, whether in Europe, the States, Singapore, Hong Kong, of people doing things to take down criminals. But in some ways, this, this could be the route for all of those good conversations where we can share. So the first point is we mentioned that Quad9 and other blocking services help to give you a sandbox so we can prove to the community that a domain is criminal, nobody's reported a false positive before you take action. We've also built a granular, granular, if I could say that, taxonomy. In other words, you don't need to just share with us domains which you know to be cyber criminal. You could be suspicious about them. And we're happy to take that suspicion, corroborate it with other parties, and then give that evidence to the appropriate bodies. Uh, GCA, the Global Cyber Alliance, in case you didn't get during the coffee break slides, uh, we're an independent NGO, we're an international organization, uh, we're neutral. So we're neutral from commercial aspects, we're neutral from the regulators, and, and clearly we, we're not monetizing this, this conversation. So we become that trusted uh, neutral party, as indeed are, are many of our partners. Uh, we've delivered platforms, as I say, we built the Quad9 infrastructure, which currently protects easily over 150 million users. So this is an advance over the art and the learning we've done there. But also as, as a global organization, it gives us an ability to take this data, not only across country borders, but also the generic TLDs, which arguably don't have a natural country home at this new space where criminals have certainly moved into. One thing which the platform is going to do in, in later versions is also scan across what we call the TLD universe. So there's approximately 1,500 top-level domains out there. We've talked earlier that when we see criminality across some of those domains, let's see whether there is criminal activity in those other spaces, which again is kind of a, a look to the future, I guess. So to move on to the next slide, if we can. So really this creates this virtuous circle. So if you, any of the audience, can give us high confidence data, we can distribute it with the right people to go and take those domains down. And you saw in the earlier slide that organizations such as .org, Central Nick, and Netcraft have already partnered with us to do this. But also that means we will find low confidence copy domains, uh, similar to my very first opening slide. And by, again, many people sharing their suspicions around these domains, if we can aggregate that together, that gives us high quality data. So this is the, the corroboration which again allows us to go and help other people to take down those criminal domains. And one thing I'd say is many conversations today, we've talked about fraud. Uh, people will talk about uh, other abhorrent acts, whether it be in terrorism or paedophilia. You know, one thing to remember is the last person who's going to take their computer to the police is somebody who's into paedophilia or, or terrorism or other crimes. So GCA here are really focused on cyber. APWG, as the name suggests, and as Foy said, started with phishing and has moved further. And uh, Yuri and many of the, the people today are into genuine, what we would call the wider group of scams. But overlap of that Venn diagram of people who commit one crime and therefore commit another. So when, you, when someone is buying the fake Versace handbag, is there a chance that malware would be downloaded to that person at the same time? The probability is quite high. So again, this is one of the things we want to investigate as the project moves forward, as opposed to the, the launch day today. So to move on then, please. And then there's a bit of a snapshot at the taxonomy. So we will classify people A, B, and C according to the investigative and legal capability. So typically A would be law enforcement, and many of the people who we've heard speak before hopefully would be interested in this. B would be the kind of telco registry, people who got a large SOC and a large investigative power, and then clearly C would be, let's say, spam list providers or, or people like that. And then the taxonomy allows people to say, number one is this is definitely criminal in their opinion. Number two is probable and number three is suspicious. But what we've also included is a minus one category. So this would be if you're investigating a crime and you need it not to be taken down because you wish to gather evidence, please flag it as minus one or an allow list. So sites which we don't want to take down, such as APWG or the BBC or indeed Google and, and other ones which we really want to be safe about. And that helps other people's analytics and artificial intelligence to, uh, to give, uh, give a reference point, for want of a better word. And also there may be what we could call collateral damage, otherwise known as false positives. So if something goes wrong or somebody makes a mistake, it's really important to be able to, to fess up, for want of a better word, for the, the contributors of data to put their hand up and flag it as minus one so that no uh, inadvertent damage happens to that domain. 
So um, what do we need? We need domains. We need people to tell us how we've got those domains uh, to declare the source. It's really important to say whether you found it or you found it from someone else. Because if Jane tells Mary and Fred a domain is bad and Mary and Fred tell GCA and we go and tell Central Nick, it looks like it's two independent sources of data. Actually, it came from the one person. So the providence, the flow is really important. But our platform um, allows you all to see all of that and all to have that transparency. So that's, uh, that's it for the taxonomy. So if we move on, please. So really, let's, let's think about a call to action here. And over here on the uh, right-hand side, we've talked about some people who can consume this data. So the registries and registrars, some of which are partnered with, with us already, would be interested in this. But also, if you're an ISP, uh, we mentioned that BT are one of our partners in, in the project. They already block bad things on their backbone, bad things normally being cyber. Uh, but we want to work with other telcos, and, and we'll touch on at the panel later with how we can work on this. DNS providers, we've talked about Quad9, Cloudflare, other DNS providers are there. And then down at the bottom, uh, not necessarily the bottom, we're all familiar with spam list providers, mail platforms, mail relays. In fact, big platforms such as Google, who we've heard from already. All of these people have an ability, as well as Gamma Advisor, clearly to help to protect the user whilst that certainty is happening. So the whole point of this platform is, as soon as there's a level of suspicion, we want to share that data, corroborate that data, work at scale to allow people to take action. So the call to automated action here is, this is a platform without people in it. GCA doesn't employ analysts. That's really the, the role of most of you on, on this uh, call, on this seminar today, to either contribute or, or draw from that. But really, the call from action for today is many of you, and indeed in the Q&A as we've been going through today, have said, what's the solution to this on the global scale? How can we share this data? How, how can we join these things together? So we, GCA, have built this platform with our partners. We've partnered with uh, APWG and Scam Advisor and some of you on the call today to help to move that forward. We'd like to hear from many others of, of you. And I think the commitment amongst the three of us as, as the leaders of, of these organizations is that if you give data to either of our organizations, we will make sure that it is appropriately shared amongst the rest of us. Which really is to say, we'd, we'd hope that you would join our circle of trust, as we've called it, as I should call it in, uh, in air quotes. But I think at that point, uh, Jordi, if I hand back to you to, to close us out, please. Thank you very much. And uh, also, uh, thank you very much to Foy. Um, Again, uh, uh, please feel free uh, to contact any of us if you like to, to share data with us and to, to find scams better.